Hi, I'm Mike McAvoy. Welcome to Fire Engineering Training Minutes. Today, I'm going to talk about acquiring a 12-lead EKG. 12 leads are typically a paramedic level skill. However, EMTs are often asked as a paramedic helper to put the leads on a patient and to actually acquire a 12-lead ECG. Later, I'll show you a 12-lead machine designed for BLS providers to acquire a 12-lead on a patient with chest pain and transmit it to a STEMI center as an early tool to provide faster care for a patient having an acute myocardial infarction. With our patient, we're going to expose the chest initially, we'll lift up his shirt, and there are actually three issues that you encounter when you're putting leads on a patient for a 12 lead. The first is oil on the skin. And to remove oil on the skin, typically you would use an alcohol prep pad. So if we were to see a great deal of oil on the patient's skin, we would wipe that off with an alcohol pad. The second issue is dead skin that's present. And oftentimes when you use a drying substance, such as an alcohol prep pad, you're going to end up with scaly skin or some dead skin in the area. That can be cleaned off by using a washcloth or a gauze pad. And just some hard rubbing on the skin will remove dead skin that's in the area that would interfere with the electrodes being able to acquire an electrical signal. The other problem, and this is a problem with our patient here, is hair that's on the chest. And hair needs to be shaved that's in the area where we're gonna place the electrodes. So the actual placement of the electrodes, there are 10 of them, on the chest wall itself are the V1, V2, V3, 4, 5, and 6. And the first thing you want to do is locate the first two leads, V1 and V2. We're going to find the sternal notch, which you can feel on yourself at the top of your sternum. And as you move your fingers down the sternal notch, you'll actually feel a little ridge and that's the base of the manubrium. The sternum actually has a small piece of bone on the top that's fused to the larger piece on the bottom. And that manubrium, or sternal angle, as it's called sometimes, or angle of Louis, depending on what anatomy book you read, is the point at which the second rib joins into the sternum. The first two leads that we place on the chest are at the fourth intercostal space. So if you were to move your finger down the sternum, you find the angle of Louis or the sternal angle. You move over to the side of that, you are now between the first and the second rib on the chest. We're then going to move down to the third interspace in between the third and the fourth rib and move down again to the fourth interspace. It's here on both sides of the sternum that V1 and V2 leads are going to be placed on the patient. So we need to shave a little bit of skin here and here, and then make sure that the passageway around to the side of the chest is clear of hair as well. Now, there are a couple ways of removing hair from the chest. You may, in your service, have a fancy electric razor. This is a typical razor that's made by 3M. The blade is disposable. It requires charging it, so the rig would need to be plugged in, but it's a surgical clipper that's a good device to not nick the skin when you're shaving a patient. The alternative to that is to use a very inexpensive throwaway actual blade razor. And in this case, I'll use the blade razor. This is a disposable device that we'll use to shave the skin in the area that we're gonna remove the hair, which we just looked at. Now this razor actually neatly took the hair off in the two spots where we're going to place electrodes. And we're now going to throw this razor away. We could use a washcloth to remove the extra hair that's around where we're placing the electrodes. But now the chest is ready for the electrodes to be placed. The next concern is the electrodes themselves. When you reach into your monitor and take out a package of electrodes, you want to be careful not to use electrodes that have already been opened. Once a package is opened, the electrodes 
begin to deteriorate over the course of hours. And within a half a day, the gel on the inside of the electrodes will actually dry out so it's no longer moist on the area that touches the skin and you will not receive a good electrical signal. So make sure that you're opening a fresh package of electrodes each time that you do a 12 lead ECG. Now despite the fact that it's called 12 leads, it actually only has 10 leads that are attached to the patient and so we need 10 electrodes in order to do an ECG. So we'll take three packages of four electrodes each, the cable that connects to the patient, and the first piece of cable is going to connect to the limb of the patient, the limbs of the patient. We have a left arm, a right arm, a left leg, and a right leg. Now, the interesting thing about a 12-lead ECG is that it's important to actually have the leads on the limbs themselves. And so when we say right arm, we mean the limb is going to be attached somewhere between the shoulder and the wrist. When we say the right leg, it's somewhere between the hip and the ankle. And it needs to be on the limbs themselves, not actually on the chest wall, as we have a tendency to do when we're just obtaining a three or a four lead ECG. So first we'll attach the limb leads to our patient. With this particular monitoring device, each one of the limb leads are labeled with a two-letter abbreviation for right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg. That provides us with a little bit of a clue as to where they go. So we'll take the left arm and we'll put it on the patient's left arm. If this was particularly hairy, we also would probably consider shaving that, wiping it down if it was oily. paste a right arm electrode on the patient, we'll paste a left leg electrode, and we'll put that right on the patient's ankle, right above the ankle area, and we'll do the same thing on the right side. Now we're going to give the patient the cable to hold on to. And next, we're going to attach the 12 lead portion of the cable itself to the patient. The 12 lead cable has the V leads that go on the chest that we had talked about previously. And those are labeled V1 through V6. So we actually need six electrodes in order to attach these to the patient. And it's helpful whenever you're putting electrodes on a patient to snap the electrodes onto the cables first before you put them on the patient because if you stuck the stickers on the patient and then push a cable onto the patient, that could cause some pain to the patient. And it's certainly not helpful in the scheme of taking good care of our patients. So the first two that we're going to apply to the patient are the V1 and the V2 leads, as we talked about earlier. And again, we're landmarking at the sternal notch, coming down, finding the little bridge that's on the patient's sternum. That's the second rib that's immediately to the side of that. We want to be below the second rib between the second and third intercostal space. We're moving down into the fourth intercostal space. And in most patients, that's going to be immediately above the nipple line. Most people's nipples are actually on top of their fifth rib. So we'll take the V1 lead and we'll place it right in the spot to the right of the sternum at the fourth intercostal space. We'll take the V2 lead and we'll put it on the other side of the sternum again at the fourth intercostal space. Now that we've placed V1 and V2, we need to determine the landmarks for the other four chest leads. We're gonna skip V3 for the present time and we're gonna place V4. 
V4 is placed at the mid-clavicular line, one interspace down below where we place V1 and V2. We said that V1 and V2 are in the fourth intercostal space, so we're moving down one rib below, and we're looking for the mid-clavicular line, and if we were to find the clavicle or the collarbone on the patient and find the midpoint of that, we're probably in most patients going to be just adjacent to the nipple on the patient. Most patients' nipples are on top of their fifth rib, and feeling one interspace below at the mid-clavicular line is where V4 is going to be placed. So we'll place the fourth electrode, or the V4 electrode, at the mid-clavicular line in the fifth intercostal space, which is one rib below where we placed V1 and V2. V3 now, which we skipped, goes in between V2 and V4. The reason why we skipped it is anatomically it's difficult to describe the location of V3, and so it's going to go in between, which essentially places it over the rib that we now just placed V2 and V4 in between. V5 and V6 go also in anatomic locations, and they're on the same plane as V4, so we're now staying in the fifth intercostal space, moving around to the side of the chest, and what we want is two anatomical points that you're well familiar with. The first is the mid-axillary line, and the second is the anterior axillary line. And if we look at the axilla, or the center point underneath the patient's armpit, that would be the mid-axillary line. And that's an imaginary line that cuts the patient's body in half underneath the armpit. That's the location of V6. V5 is the anterior axillary line, or if we were to divide the chest into thirds underneath the armpit and draw an imaginary line head to toe, we're going to place V5 in that anterior axillary line following across in the same space as V4. And we're going to place V6 at the mid-axillary line, again, following across in the same plane as V4. Now, the most common error in studies that have been done of 12 lead placement is to have V1 and V2 too high on the chest or located too close to the head. That can cause a variety of misdiagnoses on a 12 lead ECG. So you want to be particularly careful about the placement of V1 and V2. It's also possible to mislocate the lateral leads or the leads that are on the side of the chest by not keeping them in the plane or placing them too anteriorly or too close to the front of the chest. Now that all the leads are in the correct place, we're going to plug our 12 lead cable into the four lead cable. And we need two pieces of patient information in order to acquire a 12 lead. The first is the patient's age, and the second is the patient's sex. We'll go over to the monitor. We'll press our 12 lead acquire button. It will ask for a patient's age. We'll enter the patient's age into the device. And then it'll ask for the patient's sex. We'll enter the patient's sex into the device. And the machine will now tell us that it's acquiring a 12 lead. If there was an error with the machine, if a lead was off, or if there was too much artifact from the patient moving, it would tell us that it's having difficulty acquiring the 12 lead. There are some monitors that display the 12 lead on the screen as it's being acquired. Other monitors will print the 12 lead out. The 12 lead could then be transmitted, and sometimes the transmission will proceed automatically. It's not a wise idea to ask the patient to hold their breath during acquiring a 12 lead because it has a tendency to cause bradycardia and interfere with getting an adequate 12 lead ECG. It is a good idea to ask the patient not to move during the time that the 12 lead's being acquired. And if you were to acquire a 12 lead and you were to look at the printout and you were to find on the printout that it had a great deal 
of artifact or movement, the waveforms weren't clear, you'd probably want to do it again. I mentioned that there was a tool for EMTs to use to acquire 12 lead and to transmit it. This is exactly such a tool. The ReadyLink device is designed for an EMT service to acquire 12 lead in the same fashion as we just looked at using the paramedic monitor. With this basic life support tool, the same leads are placed on the patient, connected to the device, and there's some very simple buttons that allow you to acquire 12 lead and then to transmit it to a hospital. No interpretations needed, no skill in being able to analyze the 12 lead is needed. It's merely an acquisition and a transmission of the information. So today we've learned how to place the 12 lead electrodes on a patient's chest. And whether you're a BLS service acquiring a 12 lead with a device intended to transmit it to a hospital, or whether you're an EMS provider acquiring a 12 lead for an ALS service with a monitor designed to analyze and interpret the 12 lead, the important part is the placement of the leads on the patient's chest, good preparation of the skin so that you acquire a good 12 lead ECG signal. I'm Mike McAvoy. Thanks for watching.